All right, so Ian and his uh, group mates have completed step two. We go on to step three. Step three, I'd like to make a point and emphasize, you can't write a review without using contractions. Now, this is something that I struggle with, with trainees and non-native speakers of English, because contractions are hard. I mean, they are difficult if you're not a native speaker, but contractions do two things. They bring the level of the language down. It makes it more informal, mm. a more casual tone, and it makes you sound more natural and native. When you look at any type of review, contractions are used. You simply won't find a review without a contraction being used. So that being said, I tell my students, they have to use contractions. You're writing a review like you're writing a letter to a friend, not like you're publishing something to go in an academic journal. Reviews are informal. Which brings us to this sheet. Let me hand it to Ian. Ian, there you go. Mm -hmm. So Ian and his buddy, they're taking a look at these contractions. And you can set a minimum. So usually I will set a minimum of four contractions. Your paper must contain four contractions. And that's very easy. Students will probably go over that limit. Do you have any contractions, uh, questions, Ian? No, not me. I do think, let me ask you something. Uh, if you were teaching this to a middle school class, how many contractions would you list? Would you list, this looks like you have about 40. Yeah, I, I, would, give, I would give them this full list. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would do that for both middle school and high school. And nice. let them look, because chances are they've seen all of these. And mm. there's a few, like mustn't, you know, that isn't super common. You mustn't but... eat here. The exactly. cooking is just so not good. It's just so Correct. not good. Correct. Lovely. <laughs> so that was Ian's British accent. But yeah, I, I give them all of these. Why not? It gives them more to choose from. I see. So, I see. It's good. It's, it's a good reference. It's a really good reference. Yeah, I think of my uh, English teacher, Mrs. A. Smith, and she always said, your language can never not be vivid enough. You should always expand your vocabulary as much as possible. Okay, so after we've gone through contractions, your students will have looked at three worksheets. Yeah. Now, this is where I hand them a blank piece of paper, and I say, okay, this is your assignment. And as you see up here, this is what I would do for the six month trainee advanced speakers but I have must include a minimum of seven to eight sentences. You know your students' English level. I mean, if they're beginners, three to four sentences. Intermediate, four to eight, or you're the teacher. You can do as many as you please. So when I give the assignment guidelines, I always have everything in blue of what I expect. I don't want the students to have an idea of what they should or should not do. They can look at this and know exactly what's expected. Yeah, it's quite clear. So that being said, Ian, one hour later, how was your review? Did you finish it up? Yeah, it's uh, it's looking good. Um, since I've already seen Ian's review as the teacher, um, Ian finished a little bit early because he's a smart student. So I had him peer check it with his partner. And since it looked good, I want Ian to take over and do the final step. The final step is not actually writing the review but it's taken the written review and publishing it in Google Maps. And I'd like Ian to do that for us. All right, let's go find this restaurant. Let's go, I like this place. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I will go down here, write a review, nice. I'll give this place five stars. It's one of my favorite places to go. Five stars, it must be really good. Bimi Huang Te Heaven. Visit this restaurant quite often, especially if I'm having a rough day. Good, don't forget to use your colorful language and tell your story. The owner reminds me of my own family, smiling and welcoming me. I love the banchan spread. Mm, banchan. Um, for our English viewers, can you explain what banchan is? Banchan is a set of side dishes that are popular in a Korean restaurant that are more often than not 
replenished free of charge. So for example, the Bonchon spread, they have onion, kimchi, and peppers that are to die for. Well, speaking of, first of all, to die for, good language. What does that mean when we say to die for? You know, students might hear the word die and might think that's bad. Oh, the restaurant's so bad, I'm gonna die. Is that what that means? Oh, it's the opposite. It means that it's so good that you are willing to risk death to go there. Yes. And speaking of Banchan, let's do a shameless plug here. What's the name of your YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is called Banchan Warrior. It's, it's a great place to get many resources about life in Korea and about flip learning as well as different online and tech tools. Yay. One day the owner even gave me a helping of Bukba free of charge. Ah, service. Service, she said proudly. Well, that was really nice of her. I need some contractions. If you are gonna eat... Ooh, uh, gonna is a good one too. Can you explain gonna? Yeah, gonna is a informal contraction combining the word going to. What's interesting yeah. about gonna is that it only, it only applies to the future going to. It does not apply to the verb to go. I'm, uh, I can say I'm gonna go to work, but I cannot say I'm gonna gonna work. If you're gonna eat goo pop, let's go together. I love it so much, I just might die. And you know, Ian, being the good student he is, he knows that a review is the owner's livelihood. What that means is when you're reviewing a business, you have to be very careful. You have to um, express you know, good, positive digital citizenship. Mm. This is a thing you can explain to your students that you don't want to trash or say negative things. You know, I, I, it's okay to publish a negative review if you do it respectfully and tactfully. Mm. But if you say something like, you know, the owner's a real jerk and, and you know, the food is just, you know, it's, it's just, it's not a nice thing to do because that is someone's life that's someone's business you know so you have to be careful how you approach it think about how you would want them to write about your business right just remember that when you're writing things to share online these are real people that read this and these are real people that own right. these businesses that's correct you know we sit behind a keyboard and it's easy to forget that you're talking about people but it is a real life person it absolutely is well I completed my assignment, I have posted my review, my five-star review, and it is public. All right, post it all for us to see. Did you enjoy today's lesson? Oh, I sure did. It was uh, very, very enlightening, and I feel like I learned so much. So thank you so much for sharing today, Mike. I really appreciate this, and I think that a lot of people will find this helpful. Yeah, thanks for having me. And again, to wrap it up, you can do this lesson quickly within an hour with advanced students, or you know, if you have students that are lower level, that's okay, we all start somewhere. You can scaffold this lesson, and you could actually do it within two lessons. You can make one lesson the setup, talking about the adjectives, and then you can make the second lesson the, the do lesson where you do it. But uh, I'm always happy to help and, you know, share materials. And, you know, in today's world, just writing isn't necessarily what it was 10 years ago. I mean, students are going to be more apt to read a review on their phones than they are to, you know, pick up an actual book. So that being said, thanks for having me. It was fun. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, cheers. Annyeong. Annyeong.